It's been a while. I miss the family. And I thank God that I'm able to be here again after three and a half years. Amen. Today is a very beautiful day because the Lord made it so beautiful. But it's more beautiful because uh, my wife is here with me. Amen. I want to bring my wife to the podium to send a greetings to the house. Uh, we, we are so excited and so blessed that this family made it possible for both of us to travel. You all paid for our flight ticket, and we are so grateful and thankful to you all that you made it happen. Uh, we are grateful. We are really grateful. I want, to, I want you to greet the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Honestly, I'm very happy to be your miss today. And I want to say happy Easter to everyone. Happy Easter. Yes. Today is Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the Bible told us the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies yeah. by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Amen. And I believe the spirit of God is in your life. And by the grace of God, the blessings of Easter will quicken every failure to success. Amen. The Spirit of God will quicken every nothingness to fullness. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God will quicken every sorrow to story. Amen. Every trial to testimony. Amen. And that is your portion this month, this year, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for making it possible for me to come with my husband to visit you. It has been wonderful. Amen. Thank you so much. I want to say greeting for my kids back home and the church. We love you. We love you. I want to say we really love you. And we appreciate it. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Before she take her seat, you know, um, yesterday we were talking and I told her that it is a great privilege and a great honor for us to be here because uh, this is our 35th year of marriage and we have never traveled together. We have never taken a rest together. So this is actually the first time we have traveled together and to be able to refresh ourselves and you made it happen yeah. it is a great blessing to us and we really appreciate when we never 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 saw it come but you made it happen and so on behalf of myself and my wife uh, our 35th year of marriage we ever remain indelible memory in our mind that that was one of the year that we were able to travel not just travel to the jungle <laughs> but travel to the united states of america Amen. to be together living the hustling and bustling of ministry and every other thing and to be able to think straight for the first time <laughs> amen so well again on behalf of my wife and myself, we want to say thank you yeah. to this lovely family. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to be emotional, but you know, it's really a blessing yeah. that myself and my wife are able to spend a month plus together mm -hmm. without having to think about the burden of ministry and of care. Thank you. It's refreshing and it's a blessing. Yeah. And we are forever grateful yeah. to you, Pastor, and to all the family 
that made this happen. May God Almighty bless you all. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Just like what my wife said, we bring our greetings from our family, our children, our spiritual children, the Church of Jesus, and what God is doing back home in Nigeria. I'm going to share with you briefly some of the things that we did last year. But before then, let me tell you something about our nation. I know this is one of the churches that are praying and interceding for us as family and for our church and for our nation. And we are forever grateful. If it has not been the prayer of the saints, I don't think that uh, we will have been here this time. But my heart and my encouragement is that regardless what the devil is doing, Jesus is still on the throne. Yeah. We are not living our life in fear. We choose not to be terrorized by the, the spirit of fear. Because the Bible says he had not given us the spirit of fear. And if he has not given us, we are not going to accept it. And the devil cannot force it on us. Amen. And so by the grace of the Most High God, regardless of all that is happening, the world may turn upside down, we keep on preaching the gospel. Amen. We keep on keeping on. And we thank you so much for standing with us. We thank you for your prayers. It is not easy. When my wife goes to the market or our children goes out, we have to pray that they return safely. If my, my, any of our children traveled, my God, we we'll keep on calling every single time to make sure that they are okay. That is the time we are living in. But the joy is this. It is a reminder, a reminder to us all that the return of the Lord is very near. The enemy, the devil, is fighting his last battle, which he had already lost. Because the more he carries out his atrocity, the more the kingdom is forcefully advancing. No retreat. We are not surrendering. We are marching forward. So just take a moment. I just thank you, Lord. Yes, it is His grace. His grace. Our ministry, amen. Our ministry is moving on. We are planted. Uh, we are reaching out to the unreached people. Uh, we do a lot of uh, outreaches and uh, personal ministrations. And you, I just want to show you this before the message. So just take a moment and let's watch this. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. We want to let you know that um, your gift, your offering, and your prayer has kept our ministry going. You know, for the past three and a half years that I've not been able to travel, we know that the church was praying and gifts were being sent, and we're able to take care of ourselves, take care of our pastors and the work of the ministry. Uh, what you saw there, we do it every year. And this year, we are believing God that we're going to do it twice uh, because the need is so much. There are villages that are uh, unaccessible. The first uh, picture you saw, you saw the, the, the team that were working out. Cars cannot get there. They have to walk to the village and to give uh, food. So what we do every year, we go to villages and announce that we, ha we choose a center where we bring people from other villages and we give them free treatment. Medical care, we go with doctors and nurses and uh, we go with clothing and, and shoes and all. I mean, it is not something that you can express. You see the joy of people coming in and, and taking whatever they want and ministering to them physically. And then at the end of the ministration of food, clothes, then the word of the Lord comes in and how they respond to the preaching of the gospel. You know, there are people that you are going to see in heaven that you have never met before. And they are, God is going to say, you made it happen. Amen. It is your gift that saved that man, that saved that woman. And so thank you for standing with us. There is still much to be done, and we are believing the, the, the harvest is ripe. And the laborers are few, and we are ready to go. Amen. Send us, and we will go. We're trusting God that by next year, we'll have a better government, and maybe Pastor will lead some team from the church here to come and visit us. Uh -huh. Amen. Come on, don't be afraid now. You can make. <laughs> you can do it. You can. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to quickly use the opportunity to thank God for the life of the Davis for. Um, taking us in and giving us their beautiful, beautiful farm. How do you call it farmhouse or lake house? You know, what a wonderful place. My, uh, it, uh, we must go back to the ministry and to our family. If not for that, we'll have just pitched our tent there. <laughs> Everything is just there. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good to see our beautiful mother, Pam, this morning. Good to see you. And I... I'm looking forward to really spend time with our papa, who is now celebrating his 100 year. Good, 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 good. God, God bless you. God really bless you. Bless all the wonderful family in the house. Pastor, you are such a gift to this body and a gift to us and a gift to the nation of Nigeria. You've not been there, but your heart is here. We're just working on how to carry your body to join your heart. Amen. Okay, guys, let's take it easy. This is Easter Sunday. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Easter food is waiting for us for lunch. And um, I have something I need to share with us. Um, it's not really the normal trad uh, Easter traditional message. But I believe that there is something that you can take out of this message connecting to Easter. The message I want to share this morning is tied to break down, to break through, and to break out. Come on. Break down, to break through, and to break out. Yeah. This phrase is something that is very interesting, and it's an interesting pattern in the Bible. Jesus Christ. Break down. When I say break down, I'm not talking about that he lost his mind. He broke down because he was killed. He died. That is breaking down. But he resurrected. That is breakthrough. Yeah. And number three, he break out of the tomb. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Death could not hold him. Amen. Grave could not hold him. And I believe... This morning, prophetically, God is speaking to you. 
we are not only celebrating the date or the activity of Easter, God wants us to experience it in our lives. If Jesus Christ break down, which of course many of us we experience break down, break down of our health, break down of financial situation, break down of disappointment, break down of, of relationship, break down of our grandkids not living the way we want. There are things that causes not only mental breakdown, it could be psychology, it could be natural, it could be health. It could be marital. It's something that brings us down, whether by the choices we make or by the attack of the enemy. But the point is this, that is not the end of the story. Amen. Just because you came to a chapter in a book that is so bad, you don't close the chapter, you don't close the book, you don't make your decision. That chapter is not the end of the book. You finish that chapter and you flip the page over and then you see a different story. Just because you are going through a season of breakdown, it's not the end of your life. There is another season that is called the season of breakthrough. Yes. Jesus never ended being broke down. Oh yeah, the disciple felt bad that uh, we, we, we thought that he came to restore the kingdom. But here he is. He's dead. Dying is not the end. He died to conquer death. Amen. He died to raise the banner of victory. Yes. So whatever situation you found yourself today, it's not the end of your life. On, right? It's not the end of the story. Right. It is a season. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. Aren't you glad he didn't say, though I pinch my tent in the valley, I'm just walking through. Amen. I'm not laying there. I'm not sleeping there. I'm not sitting there. I'm not dining there. I'm walking through. Amen. Where is my destination? The mountain. Because every valley has a mountain. Though I walk through, you may be going through your valley. Hey, that is not the end of story. God wants to turn your story to glory. Yeah. Your message to message. Your trial to triumph. There is still more to life than what we are going through right now. Can somebody say amen? amen. Jesus Christ went down, but he came up. And then he came out. You may be down, you are coming up. And you are coming out. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. I did like to use a story, a character in the Bible, and that is the life of uh, Joseph. Joseph's life has something similar about the story of Jesus. Joseph went through these three patterns. In the book of Psalm, Psalm 105, verse 17 to 22, it reads, He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. The heart is fit with fetters. He was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass. Ladies and gentlemen, the word of the Lord will come and it will come to pass in your life. Amen. See, the devil does not have the final say. The doctor does not have the final say. When I look back to my country and I see what is happening, a drug lord being imposed on the nation, they don't have the final say. They may be celebrating for now, but their celebration will be cut short. Yeah. How is it going to happen? I don't know. It is not my responsibility to figure out all the answers. He has the answer. Right. The Bible said, trust in the Lord. All I need to do is to rest on him. 
and he will work out the details. Oh, my God. So good to know that I don't have to figure out the details because I don't have the brain. I'll just rely on him who knows my end from the very beginning. He knows me and he knows all about me. So why worry? Trust in the Lord. And so the Bible said, the word of the Lord came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. Verse 20, the king sent and released him. The ruler of the people let him go free. He made him Lord over his heart. Woo! Mm. Pharaoh made this man that was a slave yesterday, a prisoner yesterday. If somebody told Joseph that he was going to be a lord while he was in the prison, what will he think? Come on, you are joking. If somebody told him that he's going to be a lord when he was a slave, what is he going to answer? Come on. Listen, he was a slave, but that was not the end of the story. He was a prisoner, but that was not the end of the story. Are you listening to me? With a slave prison, God has a plan. Yeah. The Bible said the ruler of the people made him lord over his house. A ruler over all his possession. Mm. Verse 22. To bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. Oh God, you are so good. The first thing that Joseph went through was his breakdown. He suffered rejection from his brethren. In Genesis chapter 37, verse 5, the Bible said, Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even the more. This is his own brothers. Hated him not because his name was called Joseph. Hated him not because he did something wrong. Hated him because he had a dream. A dream of becoming somebody in the family. In the natural, he should be celebrated. There should be joy. Yes, God is going to raise somebody from among the family to become great. But the Bible said they rejected him. So the first thing that he went through was to suffer rejection. And not only that he was rejected, he was sold into slavery. My God. In verse 28 of Genesis chapter 37, the Bible sent the Midianite traders pass by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up out of, the, out of the pit. They lifted him up and they sold him to the Ishmaelite for 20 shekels of silver. And they took him to Egypt. I just want to paint a picture to you this morning. At this point in time, they've stripped away his coat of many colors. They've taken everything from him. Now, these Ishmaelites are merchants, traders. They buy and sell. And so these guys were coming, and the brothers took their own younger brother and sold him. First of all, I want to think the psychologic effect in him. My brother sold me. My own brothers. And number two, Joseph had to be chained so that he would not run away. Number three, Joseph had to be made to walk in the dry desert. Now, what you need to understand about desert is this. In the daytime, it's extremely hot. And at night, it's extremely cold. So when they travel in the day, Joseph was suffering from scourging sun on his back, his head, and the desert sand on his feet. And at night, he was suffering from that terrible cold. There was no blanket. 
and there was nothing to cover him. He was exposed to all this danger. He was down to the least of being down. Hmm. When he got to Egypt, they put him on the ocean box. And prospective buyer came to expect him. Why Joseph was standing on that auction box as a slave. Men saw slave, but God saw somebody that will become somebody tomorrow. Amen. Whatever the devil has pushed you into is not the end of your life. The devil may label you with a name. God has a name better than that for you. Am I talking to somebody here? And eventually, Potiphar came in and bought him. But then, Potiphar's wife framed him, lied against him, and he was thrown into the prison. So you see that the story of Joseph, everything was spiraling down, 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 not getting better, but getting bad. But listen to me. God has a final say. Genesis chapter 39, verse 20. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoner were confined. And he was there in the prison. That is what he found himself. Joseph breakdown. He was rejected. He was sold as a slave. He was lied and set up and was thrown into the jail. He broke down. But that's not the end of the story. Number two, Joseph break through. Somebody said break through. Break through. Hallelujah. The Bible said, in verse 22, I mean 21 of Genesis 39. The Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. And he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. While Joseph was in prison, God was walking behind the scene. He gave a dream to Pharaoh, the magician, the soothsayer, the astrologers could not interpret the dream because the dream is meant for a dreamer who can interpret the dream. And that dreamer is Joseph. And that dreamer is in the prison. Sometimes the devil puts you in a place and he, he's celebrating thinking that that is the end of, the la, uh, the end of your life. But God is setting you up for something beautiful. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes, he makes all things beautiful in his time. What you are going through may be bad, but good is coming out of it. God will change your story. God will change the situation because God is God. God does not need any man approval. He is God. And because he's God, he's able to do whatever he chooses to do. And what he chose to do is to change your story. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so the Bible said, God gave dream to Pharaoh. And nobody, nobody could interpret that dream. But then the cobbler who was in the prison that Joseph ministered to, hey, that's another message of his own. When you are going through a difficult time, it's not the time to go about complaining. Do the work of the Lord. Minister to people because you don't know who God will use to return back the favor to you. If Joseph has sat in the prison money, my brethren sold me. They lied against me. Oh God, where are you? He would have not been able to minister to the cup bearer who God used to speak about him. 
So even though that Joseph was in a bad situation, he was doing God's work. And God honored him. And so when Pharaoh dreamt and no one could, the Kobiara came and said, my Lord, I remember when I was in the prison, there was a young man, a Jewish man, who interpreted my dream and the baker's dream, and it came exactly how he interpreted. I think this man will be able to help you. Are you with me? Amen. And the Bible says Pharaoh sent for him. Now, I want to read this passage. It's so interesting to me. Maybe it will be interesting to you too. Genesis chapter 41, verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they what? Brought him. They brought him quickly out. What is that? Break true. Yes. They brought him out of where? Have you ever taken time to think about the word dungeon? What, what is a dungeon? Dungeon is not just a prison. Dungeon is a pit. It's a prison, but it's a prison that is underground. And so they brought him out. What does that tell somebody here? Resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. He came out of the dungeon. You are coming out of your dungeon. Because Jesus Christ breaks through. Yeah. Come on now. It is Easter Sunday. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. And he shaved. Changed his clothing. Came to Pharaoh. There is an invitation to somebody this morning. See, when you read the book of Psalm, I think it's that Psalm, one, uh, Psalm 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Thou art with me, that rod and the staff they comfort me. What follows? Thou prepare a table. Yes. Amen. Anytime the devil gets you, there is a table of celebration awaiting you. Yes. Amen. Yes. He does not have the finances. So they, I mean, Joseph break down by, being, by suffering from rejection, by being sold as slave, and then by being betrayed and set up and framed by Potiphar's wife. But Joseph break through as Pharaoh brought him out of the dungeon. But then there is a breakout of Joseph. Pharaoh promoted him in an instant. A prisoner to prominent. From being a prisoner to become Lord, a prime minister, that is a breakout. Break out of every limitation. Break out of every resistance. Break out everything that the enemy set up against him. And I'm believing God with all of my, the fiber of my faith that there's somebody in this house that God is breaking you out of every breakdown situation. You are coming out because God has planned this such for your life. On this Easter celebration, it is your celebration also. You are coming out of that mess. You are coming out of that pain. You are coming out of that defeat. You are coming out of that failure, says the Lord. You know, this morning when I was praying, every time when I'm coming to face God's people, I travel and pray through the night. When I'm praying this morning, one of the messages that God dropped in my heart prophetically is the word restoration. There's somebody in this house God is restoring you. It's restoring your faith, restoring whatever that you have lost. And I believe you are coming out from that situation. You may be break down, you may have suffered from break, being break down. You may have experienced so many disappointments. You are breaking through and you are breaking out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Verse 31, and the Bible said, and Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, I have set you over all all the land of Egypt. Joseph was able to save the very family that rejected him. Right. He became a source of blessing. In verse 40, 46, Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. 
And Joseph went out, break out from the presence of Pharaoh, and went throughout, whoo, break through all the land of Egypt. Amen. Break down, break through, and break out. And you are going to experience the same today. Just before I close, I want to give you one more story. And that is the story of the Galilean fishermen. Peter and his friend went fishing. And the Bible said they fish all night, break down. They caught nothing. They failed. They came back empty, woefully, nothing. And then here comes Jesus Christ. Say, okay, can I use your boat? So, of course, use the boat. And the Bible said, Jesus finished preaching. You know, something about God that made him God and being so good is that you never serve the Lord and regret. You never serve the Lord and say, oh, God, I regret serving you. If anyone regrets, you only regret that you never knew the Lord earlier enough. And so God, Jesus stood on his boat and finished preaching. And said, okay, Peter, thank you for allowing me to enter your empty boat. Now I want to fill that boat. Take the boat deep to the deep. Amen? If Jesus Christ could call miracle of a big cash in the deep, can't he do the same thing sure. in the shallow water? I believe Jesus Christ was inviting Peter to a deep walk and relationship. Okay? When you go deep, <laughs> you surrender. In the shallow water, you can jump out and walk out. Come on. That's right. And so when he took him to the deep, well, where I'm sitting, standing now, except God. If God did not save me, I'm done. Right. So, okay. Let down your nets, plural. And Peter said, okay, I have walked all night, and I failed. But nevertheless, at your word, the word of the Lord will never be less in a believer's life. Amen. Nevertheless, I will let, he led down the night and brought the net back casually, but the net was full, heavy, and he started picking. His boat filled up. His boat filled up. And he beckoned on this other empty boat. Come on, come on. And they brought that boat, and that boat filled up also. Yes. And the boat was heavy from one net. Is there anything too hard for God to do in your life? <laughs> it's a miracle working God. Amen. The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof. <laughs> Fill the boat. And what do you call that? Breakthrough. Business breakthrough, financial breakthrough, breakthrough. And when Peter saw the marvelous work of God, the Bible said he knelt down and surrendered. He left the boat and break out with Jesus. He went out to follow the miracle worker. Now listen, many will sit to celebrate the miracle, but he break out with Jesus. I'd rather be with the miracle worker. Amen. My life will always be a miracle every day. You can eat the fish, sell the fish, and be in want again, but if I follow him, I will never be in want. Amen. May that be your portion. Break down, break through, and get ready to break out today. Amen. God bless you. Awesome. <laughs>